Hi there, uh, my name's Joe Berman. I'm in my garden today, as you can see, and I wanted to talk to you about um, a really cool little app called Seek by iNaturalist, which was produced by um, the team behind National Geographic and things like that. It's a really, it's a free, really easy to use app that's really useful bi for biologists uh, and really, really handy if you're um, interested in studying plants or animals that you'll find around at this time of year. And it's a great time to be looking for uh, insects and plants all over the place at the moment. So. Rodrigo, how do we use this app? Thank you, Joe. It's really nice to see in your garden. Well, you were mentioning this app called Seek. It's very easy to use. If you have a smartphone, first of all, you have to install this app. So go to the App Store, look for Seek by iNaturalist, download it and let it install. Once you have installed it in your smartphone, then it's very easy to use. Just Click on the app and it will start automatically. And you have several options. If you don't have an account with iNaturalist, you can set up a new account. Or if you already have an account by iNaturalist, you can just simply log in with, to your account. Or if you don't want to set up an account with iNaturalist, you can simply log in with, um, directly as a guest. And you can use the app normally without any any issues. I'll show you, I'll give you an example of how you can use it to identify some organisms in your in your garden. Now I went to my garden and I'm gonna show you how I can use this app called Seek. So I have to find it, it's here, download it here. You can see I have several other apps that I use for the field. I click on seek. Now this is the home page. So I'm already signed in into this um, app, but in your case you will have to log in or you can log in as a guest. And I'm gonna be clicking this bottom icon, this green one that looks almost like a camera, green and white. So I click there. Okay, so now the app is already identifying whatever is on the field of view, in this case the grasses. You can see that identifies the grasses to the family level and there are five dots out of seven possible ones. So the better the identification is, the more dots will be filled up in green. So the grasses are particularly difficult, but here I have a mollusk, gastropod, Let's see, there we go. So the app already identified um, all the way, well in this case it's saying Roman, Roman snail, helix snails, common land snail. The position of the camera also affects the identification. So I'm turning it around, I can turn around the camera. Helix snail, well it's a garden snail this one, there's no doubt about that. But obviously we need a good photo. So there we go, it identified to species level. And I'm gonna take a photo of it. There we go. And identified mollusk. It's a garden snail. And because it's the first mollusk I have identified, I earned a badge in this case for identifying my first mollusk. So that's how it works. Now, Joe, can you tell us anything else about this app? Yeah, thanks, Rodrigo. Um, yeah, I can tell you a few more things. So I've got some more footage here that um, you can have a little look at from my own garden. Um, and I was looking to identify some plants. But before I did that, um, I just had a little flick through to look at what was around locally. So if you go to your app, you can look at your locality. Mine is in Deal, for example. And you can see some of the species that you'd find in that area. So I'm looking at the cinnabar moth here. Um, and you can see all of the records of where the cinnabar moth is in the local area, at least through this app. So you can see all the little green dots, there's some down here near Folkestone. Um, all the green dots are locations where um, this app has been used and identified <clears throat> this species. Now you have to take this with a pinch of salt because this gives you some great records. You can see some fantastic national records that we can have. Uh, which are really useful for um, identifying species distribution, effects of climate change and things like that. But the records can be a little bit questionable sometimes, so I'll come on to that. 
Um, but here's, here's an example of one that works really well. This is a tomato plant. Obviously it was a tomato plant and I identified it in my garden. Uh, and it identified it very, very effectively, very quickly. Predominantly because it's got quite clear um, sh shapes to the leaves. Uh, and in some cases it, they've got flowers. The flowers can help a lot. You can see it'll give you information about the, um, the species. And again, you can look at the range of the species as well. So the range of the tomato plant in the UK seems to be more limited than cinnabar moth, which is a bit questionable. Um, probably, again, this is, this is because most people aren't taking pictures of their tomato plants to identify because they already know what they are. So you have to bear that in mind when you're looking at records of all kinds, particularly with this app. But there's loads of good information. You've got the, the um, species information. You've got the seasonality when the, when the species is found, similar species that you might find uh, in, in the same taxonomic groups. And what I really like is this achievement system where you can earn all of these different awards for, for finding new things. And I, th I think that's a really good way to incentivize um, people to, to find um, things in their natural environment. Uh, and there are even challenges that you can take on top of this. So, you know, as, as a video gamer, that really, really appeals to me. Um, uh, I think it's a really fun way of engaging with, um, with the natural world. So yeah, my record isn't very good yet. I'm gonna look to improve that. Hopefully maybe you'll use this app as well and um, maybe you'll look to improve your knowledge about the, the types of organisms you find in your, in your garden or around your local area. So there's a, there's a few other things um, that are worth mentioning about this. They're, they're, you have to take the data that you get, the information that you get with a little bit of a pinch of salt. These are some other plants that I've, I knew what they were in my garden. Pink sorrel, it identified really, really well. This one was, was a little bit more tricky. Now, even though I had the flowers, I tried to get um, a good angle. Sometimes it depends on the angle. Um, and you have to try and get a good focus on what you're looking at. But it, it can struggle with some um, plants to identify. So it said purple toad flax here for this lavender plant. I know it's a lavender plant. And eventually it does get there, common lavender, as you can see. So, so sometimes this, this will work a little bit um, strangely and it's because it's using an algorithm to determine what the image is so sometimes it works well sometimes not so well so this one uh, Kalex yeah identified okay not so bad this is a relatively common plant that you can find um, but this one for example this uh, species it couldn't identify at, at all now I know what this species was because I bought it from a garden center uh, and you can see on the label and I go down to the label here it's a festuca species which is a common grass um, uh, garden grass and a natural grass, but it can only identify it to grass level because there are no flowers. So essentially, take the data that you get with a pinch of salt. It's not ideal for identifying everything, but it's an incredibly useful tool um, for, for identifying things you might find in your garden. You might even use it in a garden center to find weird plants uh, that, that have been mislabeled or haven't been labeled. You can identify things when you're on holiday, perhaps, although we're not having many holidays at the moment. Um, it's, it's sometimes when you're in a foreign place that you've not been before. It's really interesting to look at the, the flora and the fauna that you find there. So I hope you find this app really useful. Please do use it. It's free. Uh, we're in no way affiliated with them. We don't get paid by them or advertised by them. We just think it's a really useful um, app for students to use and just members of the general public. So please have a look at it. And that's how the app SIG works. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Rodrigo Vega and that guy is Joe Berman. We are from Canterbury Christchurch University. I hope you have fun. See you. And here we have a very nice specimen of a wolf. Yes, I know, SIG sometimes does a mistake, but this is definitely a wolf. Look at him. Hello, sweetheart. I just wanted to identify you. I think we've got it pretty much spot on. 